To MLB News, where Shohei Otani's interpreter Ipe Mitsuhara was fired yesterday after running up gambling debts that were paid from Otani's bank accounts. Multiple sources have told ESPN they totaled at least four and a half million dollars in wire transfers to a Southern California bookmaker under federal investigation. An Otani spokesperson at first said that the Dodgers star had covered his friend's debts, but later said that Otani was a victim of massive theft and authorities have been involved. As I just mentioned, Tisha Thompson here with us who broke the story for ESPN. Tisha, good morning. Good morning. I know it's been a very busy morning for you all good over morning. the place. Thank you so much for the time. Tisha, let's start here. How did this start? Well, we had been looking into what you were talking about, a, a federal probe that's going on into a bookmaking operation out of Southern California. We had had multiple sources tell us this was happening. So we were digging into that, and multiple sources and documents I had seen showed that Otani's name was on a wire transfer, or I should say wire transfers, that had been sent to the bookmaking operation, to an associate of the man who is um, in charge of the bookmaking operation, according to the sources we talked to. So we wanted to understand why. And as part of our journalism, we, of course, reached out to Otani's spokesperson. And Otani's spokesperson then uh, facilitated uh, an interview with uh, the interpreter, Ipe Mitsuhara, who spent 90 minutes on the phone uh, with me. And it was a couple of hours before the season opener in South Korea that happened. This was Tuesday night for me um, on the East Coast. And we spoke about what happened. And he laid out a story where he said that he had gotten in over his head. I'm paraphrasing here, of course, that he had gotten in over his head um, and, and had accumulated so much debt, which, as you mentioned, uh, sources had told us was about at least $4.5 million, that he had gone to Otani and had said, can you, can you help me? And Otani eventually offered to pay off his debt. And according to Mitsuhara, in that first interview, he said that um, Otani was the one who logged onto the computer and paid off the first wire, or the wire transfers uh, while Ms. Sahara gave him directions based on what he'd been told by the bookmaking operation on how to pay them off. Of course, things then dramatically changed. Okay, so I guess my question would be, first of all, there's two checks here, according to your report. Um, bank information showing Otani's name on two $500,000 payments. Yet somehow, some way, the word theft comes into play. How does that, how does that, how does that work? I just want to clarify one thing, Stephen A., because sure. I'm the one who saw them. They're wire transfers. They're not okay. checks. And I just okay. want to make sure we no get problem. our facts yeah. perfectly right, right? No problem. So, yes. Wire transfers. Okay. So, how does this happen? How do we get to the words massive theft? We were getting ready to publish our story. This was yesterday. This is in the morning of Wednesday. Apparently, at the same time, based on what sourcing has told us, um, there was a meeting right after... Uh, the game was over in South Korea, and the players went behind closed doors, and the uh, owner of the team stands up and says, there's a story coming. And Ms. Hara gets up. This is based on what a Dodger official who was in the meeting has told ESPN, that a um, that uh, Ms. Hara gets up and, again, based on what I've been told, says something to the effect of, I'm sorry, I apologize, I have a gambling problem. Another player says, um, so what? And exactly. that is when the president of the Dodgers says, well, Otani paid off the debts. Again, I'm paraphrasing here because mm -hmm. I was not in the meeting. This is based on what a Dodgers official said. So Otani, who has... Uh, he's not fluent in English. Everyone says that. But he has enough understanding of English, according to the sources we talked to yesterday, to start to say what? And he goes, after the meeting's over, he starts to ask questions. They get a different interpreter, and through that different interpreter, Ota this is what these sources close to Otani, who were privy to what happened, told ESPN, that um, he, that's when he found out about the money missing in his account. 
So if you're saying that he found out about the obviously, money... Obviously, the story changes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the story obviously changes. I guess what we're wondering about, we're talking about two $500,000 wire transfers that came from Otani's account. Last time I checked, correct me on my math, ladies, yeah. that's a million dollars. Yeah. But we're talking about four and a half million dollars. So there's an additional three and a half million dollars that got out of his account. Is, I, I mean, based on what you're hearing, is the implication here that the interpreter had access to Otani's account and somehow, some way, got an additional three and a half million dollars on top of the two $500,000 wire transfers that came out of his account? So what we've been told is that there were a series of wire transfers. ESPN has seen two of them totaling a million dollars. We have confirmed with multiple sources who have knowledge of what's going on, including from Mitsuhara himself, that it is more than that, that it is eight to nine wire transfers is what Mitsuhara told me in that 90-minute interview. As soon as we got the statement alleging massive theft, I, of course, and, and our folks in the ESPN investigative unit started calling a lot of people, and including, I call Mitsuhara. And I said, did you lie to me during that interview? And he says, yes. And through a series of questions that I then ask him, he says Otani never knew about the gaming debts and that Otani didn't make okay. the payments. The big question, Stephen A., is how did those payments get made? Can you tell us how it's connected to the federal investigation? So this federal investigation, um, there's, there's a wide-ranging probe going on about bookmaking operations. And there have been some guilty pleas that have already taken place out of the same U.S. Attorney's Office um, in the Central District of California that uh, multiple sources have told us have been looking into this specific bookmaking operation. There was a, a, a gentleman named Wayne Nix who's already pleaded guilty and is awaiting sentencing um, for operating a bookmaking operation. There were people connected to that operation who have pleaded guilty as well. And there have been athletes who have been implicated as part of that specific bookmaking operation. So we've been paying attention to, to what's happening there because there's also been guilty there was a guilty plea real recently out of Las Vegas connected to bookmaking operations with a high ranking casino official and there are casinos that are that have made payments uh, to the federal government based on these bookmaking operations and these guilty pleas so the one that we are looking at specifically no one has been charged um, but we have multiple sources saying investigators are looking at it Having said all of that, I guess, you know, because if you're the American people and you're watching, if you're the baseball community the world over, you're watching right now, you're wondering, at the end of the day, it comes down to whether or not Shohei Otani had anything to do with this whatsoever because it would involve gambling and baseball. Do you have any indication as to the seriousness with which Otani is really treating this situation because of that specific implication that he and his team want to eradicate. Clearly, the Dodgers get it. One would imagine Shohei Itani and his team gets it. But has anybody spoken to you about the seriousness of that and how he wants to address that to make sure the world knows he had nothing to do with gambling on the sport whatsoever, even though Mitsuhara claims that he never bet on baseball? There's a lot of questions right now, Stephen A., and, and those are very, very good questions, and that's what we are trying to get to the bottom of. We've obviously been asking Major League Baseball, Dodgers, anyone connected to this that has um, control over investigations and punishment, okay, what happens? I will tell you, we have sourcing that says that Major League Baseball is following closely what's coming out of um, that U.S. Attorney's Office, to, it, it, they're, uh, I, I'm paraphrasing, they're following the lead, let's say, of the, of the federal investigation. They want to know what's going on there. The Dodgers pointed out, uh, someone connected with the Dodgers organization uh, pointed out to me that this happened, and of course we knew this, this happened when Otani was playing with the Angels. Um, so... There's still a lot of questions that need to be answered. You know that we are trying to get answers to them 
Um, but yeah, that's the conversation right now. Because let's not forget, you know this, I know this, but I want to make sure people understand, Otani is the highest paid player of all time in North American sports. Yeah. He was offered and signed a $700 million contract in December for 10 years with the Dodgers. That's why he is a big deal. Well, he's a big deal for that reason and a lot of others because he's, I mean, shoot, he's the modern day Babe Ruth in a <laughs> yeah. lot of people's eyes. But I, I got to say mm. this. I, I got to say this on behalf of, uh, of just the average person watching. So are they trying to say to us that an interpreter had access to his account that would enable him to get an additional $3.5 million out of that account on top of two $500,000 wire transfers. I mean, because that's really what it comes down to. I mean, all of us know folks, all of us have associates, all of us have people who work for us, but for the interpreter to have, act, the, yeah. for the interpreter to have pulled this off, all right, the way they're proclaiming it's, 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 it's transpiring, it comes across as if they're trying to say that that interpreter somehow, some way swindled this money from him because of gambling. And I'm trying to figure out how would an interpreter have access to that account. Am I wrong in asking that question? You and me both, Stephen A. We're trying to figure out how, and I think this is the fundamental question, how did wire transfers get made with Shohei Otani's name on them? Mm -hmm. By the way, but one more last the, question. Yeah. How long has this been going on? Just for the audience, right? How long has this been transpired? Did this begin in 2021? Was it earlier than that? Was it later than that? How long has this been going on? Right now, I am working on sourcing that it's been about two years. Yeah. Mitsuhara told me that the initial meeting with the bookmaker happened in 2021. Um, that's based on what Mitsuhara said. And that the betting began soon after that. And yeah. that he, in his initial, in his initial interview, that 90-minute interview, claimed that he went to Otani um, uh, in 2023. But of course, he then walked that back and said Otani didn't know. The wire transfers uh, that I saw were from September and October of 2023.